This was a really exciting study of um, analumab, also known as base 736, um, added to ibrutinib in patients who were already taking ibrutinib. Um, so analumab is an extremely exciting antibody. It's an anti-BAF receptor antibody. So um, it's cool because it actually has two mechanisms. One is obviously a targeting antibody. So the BAF receptor is expressed on CLL cells and other B cells. Um, and then actually um, it blocks BAF receptor signaling within the CLL cells, which is a second um, demonstrated mechanism um, of the drug. At least there's extensive kind of like um, a laboratory work showing that this is also true. Um, so the original study was designed as a phase 1b study with dose um, expansion. And the main goal of it was to see if we could eliminate residual disease in patients taking ibrutinib. For anyone that doesn't follow CLL really closely, um, BTK inhibitors are dosed continually until disease progression or intolerance um, because they don't eliminate residual disease. So patients need to keep taking them. So this was aimed at doing something that would be safe and effective at eliminating residual CLL cells. Um, so the study actually enrolled patients who were either on ibrutinib for more than a year with, with CLL um, who had not achieved a complete remission or those who had molecular resistance. So those would be known resistance mutations to um, ibrutinib, which would be um, either BTK or PLC gamma 2 mutations. And this study was started in the time frame when ibrutinib was really the most commonly used covalent BTK inhibitor. So that, that was one reason that was a combination. Um, and I don't think I have to explain why there's benefits to discontinuing a medication. Um, so the first part of this was actually a dose finding, um, and then there were expansion cohorts within the two populations. Um, the dose finding identified um, three milligrams per kilogram given IV um, as every two weeks as the as the dose for expansion and that was given um, you know not indefinitely but for either six cycles of 28 days or up to two additional cycles if people um, patients in the study did not achieve undetectable um, CLL or complete remission. Um, so there was an option to do a little bit of extra dosing, but it was not an indefinitely dosed therapy. Uh, overall, the drug was extremely tolerable. In fact, uh, one of the highest frequently adverse highest frequency adverse events was hyperglycemia, um, which was really related to steroid premedication and not the actual antibody. Um, there was some neutropenia, which is transient and did not result in infection. So it was an extremely safe combination. Um, and we, we did see um, that patients were able to achieve uh, complete remission or undetectable disease and continue ibrutinib in many cases and um, remain in follow-up. But the main goal, of course, was to identify um, the dose uh, for expansion and then get some preliminary efficacy data. Um, this wasn't uh, designed to be something to definitively prove um, kind of the strategy of adding this for discontinuation that will require a follow-up larger study. Um, and then one of the neat findings that was reported at AACR was some of the work looking at um, changes in um, gene expression within both the CLL cells and the immune effector cells um, very early after the first infusion of this. Um, and that was by looking at a pretreatment one hour post infusion and 24 hour time point. Um, and this is a lot of very um, elegant laboratory science using a limited cell RNA sequencing um, and did show activation of immune effector cells consistent with what we know the drug's mechanism to be.